Hello folks, this is a different live stream than I normally do and I, um, I'm guessing the YouTube algorithms are not going to be really nice to me because YouTube they are uh, really nice set to, to basically tell they, viewers uh, about my content in accordance with what they normally watch from me. So if I fire up a stream about the Raiders or Las Vegas it would notify all of those people who you watch them, it would seem, right? But then I know that right now there are other people online looking at content about this matter. And so maybe you're joining me and um, you're thinking, hey, uh, what's he gonna talk about regarding the flake issue? Well, I wanna say one thing and then I'm gonna get to what you may believe I'm going to show and that's the video that's been played over and over again. Uh, and rightfully so. I turned 56 August 4th. That's why I'm Zenny62, right? Zenny Abraham, Zenny62. Zenny62 Media, welcome. Hey, welcome, everybody. But um, the reason why I like to call myself Zenny62 is because from 1962 to today spans, a un I believe, a unique, perhaps the most important moment in American or series of, of years and decades in American history. 1962, I argue, and I'm not gonna go on and on about this, but I'll say it for shorthand, was the birthplace of American, birth year of American pop culture. For example, if I say Rolling Stone, you know what I'm talking about? Well, hey, you know, Rolling Stone did their concerts in 62. Uh, the book, The Silent Spring, which launched the environmental movement was published in 1962. Uh, Marilyn Monroe was uh, a hot commodity who at least sang for John F. Kennedy in 62. And there are a number of events that have occurred well into the hundreds that if I name them, you'll know either about that specific event or about what or who that event refers to. Uh, hey, Cowboy Wrestler, how you doing? And um, Cowboy Russell says, uh, you, you're own on a Friday night. I don't know what you mean, but I'm, I'm here on a Friday night. Yeah, because I wanted to talk about what I contend in this arc of time that Zenny 62 covers. Uh, and that's why it's so great that we have this media system today so we can go look back and then look forward. But I want to really show you what I believe is one of the most important moments we witnessed in American cultural history, in American media history. This is the day that media and social media, because I'm using YouTube, I'm about to show you a YouTube video, have been fused together as one. And they already were, but this marks the moment right here. Uh, listen to this, okay? Uh, so listen to Jeff Flake. Yes. I understand that you said this last night you felt that the way that the that the witness was in fact credible. On Monday I stood in front of your office with Addie Barkin. I told the story of my sexual assault. I told it because I recognized in Dr. Ford's story that she is telling the truth. What you are doing is allowing someone who actually violated a woman to sit in the Supreme Court. This is not tolerable. You have children in your family. Think about them. I have two children. I cannot imagine that for the next 50 years, they will have to have someone in the Supreme Court who has been accused of violating a young girl. What are you doing, sir? I was this actually assaulted and nobody believes me. I didn't tell anyone, and you're telling all women that they don't matter, that they should just stay quiet because if they tell you what happened to them, you're going to ignore them. That's what happened to me, and that's what you're telling all women in America, that they don't matter. They should just keep it to themselves because if they have told the truth, you're just going to help that man to power anyway. That's what you're telling all of these women. That's what you're telling me right now. Look at me when I'm talking to you. You're telling me that my assault doesn't matter. That what happened to me doesn't matter. And that you're going to let people who do these things into power. That's what you're telling me when you vote for him. Don't look away from me. Look at me and tell me that it doesn't matter what happened to me. That you'll let people like that go into the highest court of the land and tell everyone what they can do to their bodies. 
Brett Kavanaugh is telling the truth. Thank you. Do you think that he's able to hold the pain of this country and repair it? That is the work of justice. The way that justice works is you recognize harm, you take responsibility for it, and then you begin to repair it. You're allowing someone who is unwilling to take responsibility for his own actions, unwilling to hold the harm that he has done to one woman, actually three women, and end and repair it. You are allowing someone who is unwilling to take responsibility for his own actions respond. to sit in the higher court of the country and to and to have the role of repairing the harm that has been done in this country to many people. No, no, thank you. What do you think? Senator, do you care to respond? No, I want to talk to him. Don't talk to me. What do you think? I understand, but tell me I'm standing right here in front of you. What do you have? To, do you think that he's telling the truth? Do, no. Do you think that he's telling the truth to the country? You have power when so many women are powerless. Thank you. Can you not give them an answer? We have our press available to talk to you guys if you want. Thank you. Saying thank you is not an answer. Please it's not about the future of our country, sir. You're appointing to a lifetime appointment in the Supreme Court. That's fine. Find security. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
hey, I'm going to read your comments in a moment, but I, Cowboy Russell, I think you're absolutely right, is one of the most remarkable moments in our history. And we, just, we saw history made today, uh, and the day has to be marked. Uh, I, as Cowboy Russell just said, that elevator moment could end up in being one of the most powerful moments in American history. I couldn't have said it better. He said, personally, I, I think it already is. I 1 million percent agree with you, Cowboy Wrestler, who goes on to write. Um, whether you like Flake or not, you have to admit he chose with his heart, not his brain today. With uh, more politicians, Republican and Democrat, I wish more politicians, Republican or Democrat, were like him. I, I completely agree with you. I, I, although I think Cory Booker is right up there with him. And I meant to record his speech, which I, th I thought was... Uh, admirably presented, respectfully presented, and yet harsh, uh, appropriately for the time, moralistic, and to the point. Because, look, you know, we're not... Let me, let me explain from my perspective how different this is. Emmett Till was killed. It was a 15-year-old black boy teenager was killed just for saying hi to a white, white woman okay and that was 1955 in 2006 the woman that complained to her husband about Till's actions admitted that she lied but Emmett Till just said hi by contrast by contrast we have a seven we have allegedly allegedly According to Dr. Christine Blakely Ford, a 17-year-old guy named Brett Kavanaugh on top of a 15-year-old woman, Dr. Ford, uh, without her wishes, okay? And she feeling like she could die. And she's carried this around with her, not just for days, not just for weeks or months, but for years and decades. So she remembers vividly what happened to her. So you would think that Kavanaugh would say, you know what? The Kavanaugh name is attached to this. My family is embarrassed. I'm going to step away out of respect for Dr. Ford, even though I had nothing to do with her pain. That's what he should have said and done, but he didn't. Instead, he came off to me, unhinged. I don't know what you, I'd like to know what you thought about it, particularly you, Cowboy Russell, since you're typing. He came off unhinged, but the whole moment of that was immediately communicated via Twitter. So you had still photographs of, you know, Kavanaugh, like, like staring at the camera, like, Rrr. I mean, that was the, that picture was the funniest. It was like, Rrr. I think I've got it somewhere. Um, it was like, Rrr. I think I do have it here. Um, it was, it was, in fact, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Twitter and pull up Brett Kavanaugh photos just to see what the, um, the, uh, spread of photos is, right? You know, because it gives you a visual of what people are thinking about, about this guy and about the moment, because you're going to see not just the photos, but you're going to see the memes as well, right? Um, well, I got to get back into gaming. I am missing out. I got to get, I got to get back into gaming and doing games and talking about gaming. I haven't done that ever. Time for, time for an adjustment. I think I'll start with Madden, but I digress. Um, I'm going to type Brett Kavanaugh here. And I, all I, all I had to do was type B, E, B, R, E, and it just filled in the rest. Brett Kavanaugh. Right, okay. So I'm typing Brett Kavanaugh. Here, folks, come with me. Hey, welcome to Zenny62. And I'm gonna press on this photos, all right? So let's see what kind of photos come up. There it is, all right? Jeff Flake, a snarling Lindsey Graham. But this is what I'm typing with Kavanaugh. Look at this, see that? I mean, look at that. Oh, by the way, he's got his, his Twitter account. Was that him? That's his Twitter account. I think, yeah. Judge Kavanaugh. Appointed by real, yeah. Is that right? <laughs> Supreme Court Justice nominee 
No, that can't be right. This is a dead giveaway. I don't think the real, I don't think the real Brett Kavanaugh would actually write this. Okay, so let's figure he didn't write that. All right, he's not even he's not even it's not even verified. This one is Judge Kavanaugh. It says there's another one. Yeah, all these fake Judge Kavanaugh ones. Whatever. Okay, look at that. <laughs> I mean, look at that, folks. I mean, it looked like he, he smelled dog poo. You know? <laughs> Look at that. Okay? There's Bush and a young Brett Kavanaugh. That's Mark Judge. Jeff Flake. Charles Grassley. Kavanaugh. Flake in the elevator scene. Um, that's uh, Senator Eshoo, Flake, Kavanaugh, Pat Roberts and Jerry Moran. Another, the Kavanaugh with a face, okay? Jeff Flake being quoted, this country is being ripped apart here. We've got to make sure that we do our due diligence. Kavanaugh. <laughs> that expression again. <laughs> Two pictures. Kavanaugh. And, uh, okay, so now this is interesting. It says, Senator Cory Booker admitted to groping female friend at 15. Yeah, well, at least he admitted it, okay? <laughs> oh, well. And he was 15, okay. So, there's Kavanaugh. Uh, statement from Kavanaugh. This is the one that I thought was the most hilarious. This is the one where I thought it looks like he's going to eat somebody. See that? <laughs> you get the idea, okay? Um, all right. This has been talked about a lot around house here. Hey, welcome to Zenny 62, everybody. How you doing? This has been talked a lot about around the house here. And um, I thought, and John, John Cardenas says, uh, he says, all oh, this is a joke. Why is it a joke, Johnny? Let's, let's, I want to hear, well, I, I can't really hear what you're saying, but you wrote, um, what you wrote right here is, uh, you wrote, uh, uh, here, you said, Johnny Cardenas, all this is a joke. Okay, why is it, uh, why is it a joke, Johnny? Why is it a joke, Johnny? I'm curious, I mean, it's not a joke to me. Um, so I'm, but I want to hear, or I want to see what you write, because there's nothing funny about it at all. So while you are, I would hope, queuing up your response to my question, let me say this. I had a friend call who was just emotionally distraught uh, because it brought, because the moment brought up a lot of episode she went through, including one in her very young years. Um, I'm not going to say exactly what happened, mindful of the possibility that she's listening, but uh, she is number of one of a number of people who've been affected by this. And the reason is you see a guy who, in Brett Kavanaugh, who's not expressing the appropriate level of concern for Dr. Ford, who's obviously been harmed. That in of itself is the problem. And it expresses the idea that, hey, look, in this quest for power, there are people who quite literally will run over other people, right? Um, that, that's the idea that's, that's communicated. It's like, hey, you know what? Um, they're gonna run over and, and, and do that. I mean, because this guy wants to be a Supreme Court justice. Quincy Jones said it best. He said that it was actually in Verge online magazine. She's a hard copy magazine too. About why all this bad stuff is being thrown at us. That was the, what the, the interviewer asked. And Quincy very eloquently said that he felt it was the Lord's way of throwing all this stuff at us and saying, okay, deal with it. Deal with it. 
This is something else the Lord is asking us to deal with. But then also setting up the situation with Flake in the elevator and saying, okay, deal with it more. Boom, here it is. There's a reason why all of this happened, okay? But Johnny Cardenas, you haven't told me why you think this is a joke. I'll tell you why it's not a joke. I'm going to make it very simple for you, okay? Very simple. It's not a joke because someone was harmed, okay? Someone was traumatized, all right? And whether or not it was Kavanaugh's fault, and if, it was, if, if Kavanaugh believes he's one million percent innocent, he should be the one calling for an investigation of the FBI. He should not have let himself be seen rejecting that idea, okay? That was wrong on his part. What if his girls went through stuff, stuff like that? He would hit the ceiling. He would be ready to go and find the person and do whatever, okay? All right? But the biggest problem is that some of you watching this, particularly those of you who tune in, you stick around maybe for a few minutes and then you leave, you do so because you expect me to say something that supports Kavanaugh. Shame on you. I mean, shame on those of you, and like Johnny Cardenas, you say this is a joke, all right? Shame on you. It's not a joke. Shame on those of you who would think that it's okay to harm someone. I'm not saying that I'm by any means, you know, all high and mighty dude. No, we're all sinners, okay? That's just a fact. We're all sinners. All of us. But, and I've said this before on this channel, what has been lost in this society is the development of the gentleman. Uh, and all of society, male and female, are to blame. I mean, little things like holding a door open for a woman, right? Oh, don't be, don't, don't do that because you're putting down the woman, or showing the appropriate deference. All of that goes with understanding your boundaries with respect to a woman. That's what gentlemen do. They understand their boundaries with respect to women has always been the case. In history, particularly American history, if a gentleman got out of line, a woman gave him a bop across the like that, okay? And the, the man would stand there and do nothing because the man knew that he did wrong. The man knew he did wrong, okay? In today's society, and unfortunately, even though Brett Kavanaugh is around my age, he seems to reflect this approach I don't like. In today's society, the man doesn't apologize to the woman. The man is as self-righteous as the woman. The, and the man, even if the man is right, the man doesn't find the right words to say to the woman to say, you know what? You definitely were harmed, but it wasn't by me, which is what he should have said. That's what he should have said, okay? So, we as men have some growing to do. We have to regrow gentlemen. But, and, and, and part of that, no man should ever think, as some men do who watch, for example, there's a video I have of a, a bus incident where a bus driver hit a teenage black girl because she was basically smart mouth to her and she didn't really throw anything, she kind of motioned, but she's a little girl, I mean, she was tiny. He hit her with an uppercut. I hate to say this, it sickens me, but the vast majority of men who responded by comments did so without using their real name and applauding the bus driver's actions. like and saying, you know, that the woman shouldn't have done what she did. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's kind of, that's how crazy this is, our society has become. All right? It is how crazy our society has become. So, Johnny Cardenas, when you say, as you've written, you did, you said, what did you say? You said, 
All this is a joke. No one is laughing. All right. It's not a joke at all. No one is laughing about it. I'm not laughing. You shouldn't be laughing either. It is it points to a serious problem we have in our society. And then we had a period where, you know, women look glorified the James Deans. Why he was the Jimmy Dean was that was the fifties bad boy. Okay, we've had scores of you know examples of of bad boys, but and the good guys were always thought of as being wimpy, not worth the time. We have to have a conversation about the whole of society that has derided the good guy. Because that is in part how we got here. Okay? That, and that's, that's just a fact. Oh, he's boring. He doesn't do drugs. He's this, okay? Or, like I wrote in my piece about Bill Cosby, I talked about the number of women that I met who, if you're a black guy, they expect you to do drugs. One woman on Twitter said that I was misogynist for saying that. Well, she didn't say specifically that, but that was a central part of my message. And I said that to my mom, and she says, is that lady crazy? I said, yeah, mom, I think so. In fact, she claims to be some sort of mental health, ex-mental health student or ex-mental health patient, and now she's a teacher who has just 65 Twitter followers. I blocked her. Us, you know, just wacko stuff. We have to encourage men to be gentlemen as we used to in the past if we want to move forward and we're in we, we have to stop because something else that's occurred during this time we haven't encouraged gentlemen is we formed a society where there are people who feel that it's okay and not sexist to be mean to women. In other words, they're going to treat the woman, even a pregnant woman, the same way they'll treat a man. I'm sorry. That's wrong. I don't care about tech. I don't, I don't care. It's wrong. You can't. We have to get to this point where we try to get this equalization when it's convenient for us. And then some people use the equalization to be mean to somebody else as a way of getting out their own issues. That's completely one million percent wrong. Okay, We have to fix all of this, all of what I'm talking about, in order for women to be in a society where they truly feel safe. We have a society where there's true safety. Safety of existence, safety of behavior, safety of being, the freedom to be. But in order to do that, we have to get back to the establishment of expected moral social norms. Note I said, be careful, moral social norms, okay? About, respect, about what is respectable. Nothing wrong with that. When by contrast, I love it when uh, uh, just to, I love it when a woman holds the door open for me. Civility, you want to take it beyond that. Someone might hear this and say, "Well, is any of it?" But look, there are physical differences between men, men and women. I'm not when I say that. Let me say this. Twenty five years ago, there was a study written uh, about that advocated women in an army, and I presented that to somebody because it noted that a woman could increase her strength four times without any visible increase in muscle size. And the U.S. Army had had a special uh, experiment on how women could be, well, as we now say, buffed up to be in the Army. And the, 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 the study proved very effective. Now today we have female power lifters, we have um, bodybuilders, they're all very beautiful. As a fan of female bodybuilders, I will tell you one thing that I've learned over time. 
women bodybuilders want to be treated like women. They love it when a guy loves them, says they're beautiful, holds the door open for them. They also, but they also love a guy who cooks for them, okay? Or, or takes them to dinner at a place like Paris and Las Vegas, which I did about 11 years ago now. Was it that long? Oh my God. 11, 12 years ago. 2005, two, yeah, 13 years ago. Eek! 13 years ago. It's a great date. So, the, the term treat her like a lady should never, ever, ever, ever be lost on anyone. And Johnny Cardenas, I might add, you never wrote why you thought this was a joke. So let me help you out here. It's not a joke. You made a mistake. Okay, you wrote something that was foolish, um, that was ridiculous, that had no meaning behind it, that you shouldn't have done. It wasn't, you didn't mean to do that. You were just being provocative. Heck, your real name may not even be Johnny Cardenas. Although that is a, a, that is a real name. <laughs> okay. No. There's nothing funny about what transpired. There was everything historic about what we observed. It was history. It was made. It started a lot of dialogue, a lot of talk. I understand rape crisis centers, phone calls in many cases have went to a point where they were overflowing. Um, yeah, so it was something that needed to happen. But remember this moment. Okay, if you're watching this, make absolutely certain that you get the power of media. And if you're starting a media company, you're talking about starting your own YouTube channel, study this moment as well. You know, it's, it's, it's the art and science of capture, of knowing when a moment happens and understanding that you should capture it for distribution, dissemination, and, dis and discussion. The three Ds, distribution, dissemination, and discussion. I just thought of that right now. Now it's here, all right. So um, I can tell there are not a lot of you who want to really chat about this so much as you respectfully want to listen to what I had to say. I appreciate that, but I wanted to note this. Um, I wanted to note how special this moment in history was and what it says about where our society has come to and where it should go. The upshot of it for me is this. Bring back the gentleman. Raise your kids, raise your young men to be gentlemen. Period. Okay? That's the one. That's the take. We don't have enough gentlemen in our society. We need a lot more. Be a gentleman. See ya.